Hey, it's Alice from Contentrix, and we're here for another Hangout. Uh, this week we're going to talk about content brainstorming, coming up with those ideas for what uh, you should write about. Uh, with me right now we have Rebecca Ishibashi, sorry, Ishibashi. Ishibashi. <laughs> and Wanda Bader. Um, and so that's what we will be talking about now. I know that a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this too, that when you go to write something, you actually have no idea what you're going to write about before you get there, and you're kind of thinking, well, what should I blog about? Or you search around, you get distracted, you get lost on Facebook, and it takes a while to write it. Um, what I always recommend, and, and I usually do, uh, is keep making your content brainstorming a separate activity from writing. If you go to sit and try to do the topic idea and then write, you're going to take a lot more time. You're not going to come up with as good, I think, usually as to topics as if you just took maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. You could do your whole month's worth of brainstorming at once because once the ideas start to come for one, it's easier to come up with more. And then when you've got all the list of ideas, you can just go to the computer and start doing them instead of, you know, spending that wasteful time doing other stuff. So, uh, Rebecca, how do you how do you approach? I know you were talking about picking up our uh, content accelerators at Contentrix. But normally, how do you uh, do your you know come up with your topics? Um, I um, I have tried in the past to um, schedule some time solely for um, for that for coming up with topics. And I I have to be honest with you, I haven't been successful at. Um, Staying on task, you know, something comes up that's um, a little more urgent at the time, and I've I've not I've not been successful at my scheduling. Um, but being that you are the expert in um, in content, I uh, I guess I'm going to have to just be very uh, uh, militant about carving out that time on my schedule and staying staying with it. Because it makes sense if you if you just stay with it, then it's done instead of picking it back up in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I and I think too one way I stay on top of it is because I have people writing content for me. So ghostwriters are sitting there waiting for me to tell them the topic. So I put it on my calendar about a week before the beginning of the month, and then I have to do it. That kind of forces me. So when the others are relying on you. That's one way to make sure you get it done. But even if you're writing it yourself, too, like making sure, yeah, you, it's easy to push that deadline. When it is. It's you. It but I think it's, yeah, making a habit of it. And, it. and it gets easier, too, as you go along. And also one of the things I recommend is keeping an ongoing list of ideas because, you know, everywhere you go, you're in a restaurant and suddenly something comes to your mind and it's totally unrelated to your business, but it somehow triggers something. Is having, you know, if I, I keep my ideas on my phone, on the notes feature. Uh, some people might want paper. I used to carry a notebook when I, when I used to use paper. Uh, and so, you know, it's to have something there that, you know, you get kind of get into the habit of it. And, and yeah, you probably have to force yourself for the first little while. Yeah. Yeah, it's too easy to, it's too easy to let that slide yeah. for the project. Yeah. How about you, Wanda? What's your process for coming up with topic ideas? Well, what I usually try to do is um, I, I do a lot of reading with the media to see what's hot. So that I, uh, because, you know, my specialty is online marketing, uh, I do a lot of social media type things. So I have to stay in touch with what's going on with all the different platforms and see what's relative to the market. So and how are you doing? Been changing so much lately. Yeah. So how are you doing that? Like you're you're subscribing to blogs or reading news or like where? Yes, uh, I subscribe to uh, a variety of different blogs uh, for people who are the leading experts in the country. Right. Um, you know, people like Mari Smith, and um, I also uh, pay attention to what's happening happening like on the Huffington Post. And see, uh, you know, checking out the business section to see what people are really interested in because I figure they really have the pulse of what's going on in they today's do. market. 
And whether you, you know, some people don't like Huffington Post, but whether you like them or not, they, they know, you don't have to approach topics in the way they do, but you know which topics are hot because they are, yes, they are paying attention to that. They get a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a great one, not, you know, because they cover different subject areas. That's a great one for everyone, actually. A, a great idea. You know, put that in your... You could probably subscribe to, like on your RSS reader, you can subscribe to the specific category, right? Yeah. Right. Right. I, right now I use Google Reader to do that, but I understand that might be going away someday. Do you have a recommendation for a new reader? I don't at the moment, but you can, when you do figure out what you want, uh, you can export your bookmarks and it, it creates a little file and it's fairly easy. Mo a lot of them will be compatible with that. You'll be able to move it over. But no, I, ha I haven't gone to go and look at that just yet. <clears throat> I actually currently don't use a lot of RSS. I don't, I, I had set everything up and then I actually got a little <laughs> overwhelmed by everything and I kind of use a different different methods to do it, but um, definitely have to be looking at it because when it, yeah, it's a great, it's a great tool to use. You know, scanning, even scanning the, he just scanning the headlines and things like that. Mm -hmm. to sit there and read everything to get a lot of great ideas. And the same works for your emails, too, if you subscribe to newsletters as well. Um, you can, you know, either set up the mailing rules where it all goes to a specific folder or maybe create a new email address and all the newsletters on in your particular niche can go straight straight there and, and just scanning tells tells you a lot and gives you a lot of clues and ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what, exactly what I do. I have a separate email and I still have that all categorized to between, you know, um, what I get uh, in different subject areas. So, you know, I could have a category for social media, one for business coaching, and also, oh, somebody else is joining. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Oh, we can't hear. You can continue. Your mic. I don't think your mic is working, Shelly, but Wanda, go ahead and finish up. No, so uh, you're absolutely right. I found that's the best way to keep my sanity and uh, keep the overwhelm at bay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. You're not, Shelly, you're not muted uh, from us. Oh, is that you? Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> there you Hello. go. Hello. Thanks. Hi. Uh, we're talking about oh, who's is Sorry. that? Oh, that's you. No, that's okay. There's dogs in, in most of the houses here. <laughs> and a cat. Cat probably won't make so much noise. Um, we are talking about content and brainstorming. We were just sharing a few ideas on how we approach our. Uh, you know, coming up with content topics, and just you just got here, but we, we can put you on the spot and see if you, you know what what's your approach. Uh, what's you know the things you do? Well, I'm fairly new to to building my own content, so I got I actually just sat down one day and kind of wrote down all the things that were pain points for my first year in business, and my first year in business started at. D and went to X and then went to H. So, you know, there was a whole bunch of different uh, different things that I kind of tried on. I, I think a little bit high from leaving corporate, you know, Canada and being able to go explore things that I I wanted to. That was <laughs> that was exciting. Yes. Uh, and where are you from? Where are you? Uh, I live in Whitby now. Ah. Yeah. So and so, and what market are you? Are you still kind of? Is it still you're trying to figure that out where you want to be? Well, I'm. I the clients I've been working with have. It's been about social media management. So I started with social media, uh, sort of a way to market my own business when I first started, which was training and coaching because that was the part I still liked about the job I left, um, and found out that I really loved it and so I've been learning and I kept helping other people set theirs up and saying no that's not what I do but I'll help you and then it finally occurred to me that all the signs were pointing that actually this was what I did I just wasn't getting paid for it so this year I've I've been redoing 
you know, my focus and, and concentrating on that. Uh, apparently, I need to be hit on the head a few times before I get the message. You're not the only one. <laughs> one Network's uh, in a similar market, and actually, just before you came in, you should go back. I'll send out the link to the recording. She had some uh, good ideas, so maybe we'll go back and review the first few minutes of the recording. Yeah, I watched last week's as well. Yeah. Um, and so I was also, let's think of, and, and you guys feel free to jump in any time if I start to go on a, <laughs> on a tangent. Last week we actually gave, uh, you know, we talked about repurposing content. Those, that was brainstorming as well. So that's taking the content you have and either reusing it or changing it or developing new formats and things like that. So that's a, you know, definitely if, if for, and, and I'm, this, I'm speaking generally to anybody who's watching this. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that one yet, go and watch that as well. That's going to give you a ton of ideas for using the stuff you already have. Uh, you know, no need to reinvent the wheel. Our, our audience needs reinforcement. They need things explained to them in different ways. They also need ways to apply what you're teaching them. So that's why I always say, you know, content, you know, 10 years ago, we mostly thought of content as articles. Then we started the blog posts then the audio and the video and everyone's pretty you know good with that we do all those formats but content is is more than just those things as well obviously reports and emails those are also very common but things that help your readers do what you're teaching them to do like spreadsheets patterns mobile apps you know worksheets fill in the blanks checklists and you know tons of printables people we talked about that last time people love printables uh, flow charts or facts or FAQs, um, all kinds of different types of things that can help people do what they need to do. You know, always try to find a way to make it easier for your audience to digest your content uh, and apply what they learned. And as an idea, the application part, the part that shows them how to do stuff, can always be a good product as well. You know, it doesn't have to be all the you know, the freely free content. So when we're talking about content today, I'm probably skipping between um, the you know, between free stuff and paid stuff. Shelly, I think there might be some noise in the Do you mind if I No, I can even if you I want can, to just unmute yourself, I think. <laughs> Your face keeps popping up and it's, and I hear something too and I I'm just distracting you. All right. But feel free. Oh sorry, anytime unmute it and, and or no, it's somebody else. I hear. Oh no, it's not muted. That's fine. There we go. I think maybe you did it at the same time. All right. All right. We're good. So always, you know, think about different ways. Don't just think about that blog post. People love it. You give them something to download. I don't know what makes it so special. If they feel like you've gone the extra mile, or if it really is just very useful to them, people just love that. So thinking downloads and free things, free things or paid things that they can get and that really, I, you know, I found that often made like a, a much bigger connection to the audience because I think you're going further than what a lot of people, bloggers will do or, or whoever, content publishers. So when we're talking about ways to brainstorm, we did uh, talk about earlier about keeping an ongoing list of notes uh, and that's, you know, whether it's digital or paper. Uh, keep it, always keep it with you wherever you go. So if it's going to be a notebook or something like that, make sure it's in your purse or your, your man purse or <laughs> for the gentleman who might be watching. Uh, or use your phone because that's a great tool that every, almost everybody brings with them. Um, we talked about scanning headlines in an RSS feed and newsletter subject lines, uh, you know, putting those into specific categories so you're, you're keep it as organized as possible. Uh, we also talked about setting up a special email address maybe for your newsletter so that all the tight topic stuff goes in one place. And then you're also not distracted when you're working and you're answering client emails and all these newsletters are coming in. Uh, you're not, you know, heading off to look at that stuff. Uh, also, another one that Wanda talked about was uh, news. The news. Well, actually, we didn't talk about specifically about news. She talked about news in the social media uh, industry. But sites like Google, you know, the news option when you search at Google, great place to, you know, scan headlines in your subject area. And a lot of people think that the news may not always apply, but there's always ways to take stories 
the things that are happening in the news and applying them to a lesson for your audience. It's, you know, it's a great way to find stuff. Obviously, you could do it the old-fashioned way as well. Newspapers, magazines, and other printed publications are a wealth of information. Um, and, you know, get in the habit of scanning, too. I think that a lot of times with we're going to do the brainstorming, we get lost. So if, you know, if you want to read the magazine you've got, then maybe save that reading for another time. But, you know, just, you know, looking and scanning through, or even just going in a store or something, you know, the, some of the big bookstores, they have tons of magazines on, you know, specific topics, scanning the headlines and things like that can uh, offer you a bunch of ideas. I also find that article directories, like e-zine articles, where a lot of people submit their content, they're really good for scanning headlines. You know, you enter a keyword and see what people are writing about, because that's a place, and although I think e-zine articles is less effective for, you know, search traffic than it might have, it has been in the past, I think that you can find, that's what people use it for. They're trying to target those hot topics and things like that, the things that get a lot of traffic. So it's definitely a great place. I don't say, I think a lot of the content itself is not great quality, but the ideas are there for you. We're not necessarily looking, we're looking for ideas rather than, you know, researching what we're going to write about. Also PLR, or private label rights content, uh, you guys know that I offer some of that, but when you don't have an idea of what to write, the, your favorite PLR provider, whoever that is, uh, can, you know, might be out there with something that will suit, suit your needs. Um, social media itself, also, uh, you know, Facebook has the graph search, Twitter has hashtags, and then the advanced search function, actually, you can find, you know, people talking about a variety of topics. Or looking at sites like dig.com and technorati.com, you can also find that's more content-based as opposed to social-based, but it has a social component. Uh, it, it'll help you identify popular content topics and things like that. Also, you know, Facebook groups or uh, groups and other social media sites also, you know, you can see what people are asking for over and over again and what questions they want to know the answer to. That's the same with message boards, um, old school but still, you know, alive and kicking and out there and then they're a great source of information. And message boards actually in forums are, same thing, I'm just using the different word, but uh, they, they're even easier to search through usually um, to, to find the information. Like Facebook groups, the, you know, the information on the groups is kind of scattered and new stuff comes up. It's not as well organized as a forum is. So if you know a forum in your niche, you know, definitely you don't have to sit there and post there all day, but, you know, using it as a, as a way to find what people are wanting to know, what questions they're asking. Um, and speaking of questions, there's always sites like Yahoo Answers um, and other question sites that post, you know, the, you know, what people, people want to know and, and people are posting the same questions over and over and over again, uh, those provide you with great, great clues on what would be popular with your market. And obviously, you want to ask your, your readers, your audience themselves, you know, have a submission form for questions. I did that for many years and it was very useful and, you know, I always had an idea of what to write about in content. One thing I recommend, though, is maybe if you can sometimes people submit questions and it's hard to know exactly what they're me they're meaning. Um, and I, for a while, I didn't ask for their names and email addresses because I didn't want them to feel like I was answering them personally because I can't I can't reply by email. But I made it clear that you know we will try to answer your question, uh, but also provide that information in case you need clarification because sometimes I find a lot of the submissions were very unclear. But once, if you can click that way, open there. Oh. <laughs> Guard dog on duty. <laughs> uh, and another, you know, obviously, uh, in years past, I always told people to go to ClickBank. Um, they're good for obviously, and now the Kindle stores. 
uh, what I wanted to add. Now we have is even, you know, see what's popular there. These marketplaces uh, not only could tell you what, you know, maybe topics you could use for your paid products, but also for your content in general. Um, you know, the pop, it, it's popular, that means that you've got, you know, a possibility to go in there and, and do a bunch of topics related to that. Um, also, and, you know, you can write reviews on those popular products or talk about those products and, and directly, you know, tap into their popularity as well that way. Um, and, you know, speaking of paid products and information products, if you have an information product, uh, can always think about when you're doing your content brainstorming, think about what content will allow you to mention your product because you want to be mentioning it as much as possible. So, you know, you don't, you're not going to be breaking up your information product into a bunch of articles. You're not going to do that. But there are, are different ways to tie into your into your content, whether you're providing little tools or a little report or whatever it is. Uh, always, you know, remember what you're trying to sell and, and, and or if you're an affiliate selling something else. That's a great way too is if you find a product that you want to promote. Uh, it's an easier, it's an easy way. It's already, you've already got the topic picked out, the main topic. Now all you have to do is come up with the, the specifics. So guys, when you like approach your content, uh, do you, you know, what do you usually do? Do you usually do just, you know, blog posts or articles or, or what's, you know, what's your favorite approach? Videos? What is it? Rebecca, what, it, what, uh, ha. Uh, <laughs> um, well, You're it, next beside me, you get to Yeah, it. there you go. <laughs> uh, that's what I get for being on time, huh? Um, oh, I uh, started uh, primarily with the blog post, but now I'm branching out more um, to um, video. I, I want to get into some more podcasting, but I, I've got so many irons in the fire right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to mix it up a little, um, a little more than just just the blog posts. You know, um, blog posts are valuable, can be valuable if the content's good. But there again, um, a lot of people want to digest the information as quickly as possible. Um, and they're going to be able to do that um, most of the time with a video a little quicker than sitting there and reading. Um, so, uh, and I think people get tired of the same um, type of content. So I'm trying to mix it up a little more. Yeah. Give them something different. Um, infographs, I think a lot of people, that's why they got into inf infographs because it was visual and it was quick and, you know. Um, I do have a question that's a little off, uh, off topic, but being that we have uh, uh, two other social media people on here, um, I wanted to ask what the consensus was about offering um, or the uh, freebie offers if uh, if you found that the short one page uh, freebie was more popular than uh, something consisting of several pages like a, a white paper does anybody have any any comments on that uh, I think Shelly, if you do want to talk, you can unmute yourself. I won't touch it, so we won't. We don't both <laughs> try to do it at the same time. Um, I've been using a uh, an ebook, and I'm finding it there wasn't a whole lot of pickup. But when I've offered checklists, okay. That's what people have really, really, really liked that much okay. better. I think it's an easier thing to digest, yes. and they're easier to make too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, that's what I'm thinking of myself and, because I personally feel that way. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, what was the other lady's name on the in the forum? Wanda. I think you can you see their names on the top right, or I can see them. You oh, you guys can't. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I can now. I, excuse me, Wanda. Yes. Under Do group chat. Same thing. Uh, to be true, a, a one page, uh, something quick. Like an FAQ or a checklist? Um, I think people love checklists and templates. Um, I incorporate all the above. Okay. I, 
I, I've done ebooks, I've done checklists, I've done uh, templates that you know you can uh, give them a, a little bit more of uh, brainstorming type of thing versus just the simple are you doing this, this, and this. It kind of makes them think about uh, their particular business because we're all unique, you know, our personalities are all unique. And how we approach uh, doing social media, for instance, it, it can be very unique. So it has to be in someone's comfort zone. Video, for instance, is not necessarily always in someone's comfort zone. Right, Alice? <laughs> 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 so uh, I, I would say that um, it just depends on what you want to do. But mixing it up, I think, is an excellent idea. It just breaks the monotony for us as well. Right. Have you found that, that your one-page uh, uh, giveaways have been more popular than your ebooks? Not necessarily. No. Okay. All right. So content is the uh, is what's driving the popularity. Yeah, I think it's it's all in what somebody's looking for at the time. You know, sometimes you just hit a, a hot topic. Okay. Yeah, that's important too. I mean, there's so many factors that are going. But it is an interesting thing, though. I know that you know when I first started uh, doing information products, I don't even know how long ago that would be. But people would say, "Oh, an ebook has to be at least this many pages," and I'm like, "I don't really want to do that. That sounds like a lot. They could go to the bookstore and buy a book if they want one that long." But I always used it, and this is paid products I'm talking about, but as a selling point too was this is quick, this is concise, it has no fluff in a few pages, you know, in reading for 20 minutes and you're going to be able to go and do this instead of trying to wade through a book. So it all, I think it's all also in the way you sell it, whether it's free or it's paid, you still sell the free stuff, right, because you want them to subscribe and, and all that, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right, so so where were we? Oh, Shelly, like, so what kind of, you know, what formats are you working in, or how do you approach it? Even if it's a blog post, like, do you just write whatever, whatever comes to mind, or do you use a certain format? Yeah, I've done mostly blogging, uh, some articles. I haven't gone into podcasting or videos. Um, and most of the, the blogs have simply been whatever I was dealing with on any given day. Uh, and at the beginning, it was really inconsistent. So, you know, I've, I worked a lot on, on that this past few months. And the articles have been whatever people are asking me. Right. So if they're asking me, then I, then I figure that there's an interest there. Yeah, well, that's a great way to come up with topics for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, because I'm, you know, really I've only been focusing on it for the past few months. Um, even though I was working on it for for the past year, um, I've still got you know that that plethora of ideas of questions that I had at the beginning. So mm -hmm. I still have those to work through. Yeah, great. But I I have been doing the scanning through Google News and Google Alerts just to see what's going on. I don't know why it never occurred to me to look at fa Facebook groups. I'm in a whole bunch. You'd think I would look at what questions were being asked. So that's a yeah, great idea. After you participate in a while, you'll start to see a pattern, right? That people yeah. keep coming and asking the same questions. And yeah. yeah, and I like the checklist because I found when I first started, you know, I'd pick up a few little courses to fill in some blanks for myself. I often found they had holes. Yeah. It, they would make assumptions about what somebody knew or didn't know, even though it said, you know, basic or intermediate or, and there would be this big gap that I'd have to go and do research on and fill in anyways. Yeah. So, in the few info products that I put together, I've tried to make sure that those gaps are filled. Um, but constantly a challenge. You never know what somebody's going to ask. Yep. <laughs> That's true. So what about you, Wanda? What, I know you're doing a lot of different things, but maybe you'd like to kind of tell us where, where you're putting, what's your approach to creating content? Um, I definitely am a planner, as you probably are aware <laughs> from our past talks. But uh, what I try to do is I, I know that, um, you know, I want to blog at least once a week. And then uh, social media, I do every day. 
And so uh, I, I would say my best advice to anybody is find the social media that really works for your particular industry and don't try to do them all at one time, but you know, maybe get one under your belt before moving on to another one and um, see which ones respond better to you and your market. So are you, when you're talking about participating in social media, are you just kind of discussing or do you have content that you kind of put together specifically for social media? Like no, I do some curation marketing. Um, so I will post obviously my own blog and what I'm offering, but I will also offer information from um, some top level uh, experts in the field to educate my market more. Okay, yeah, great. Because yeah, I've been doing more too with like for the food site, I do more the social media stuff, Facebook in particular, uh, Pinterest as well, but more Facebook. And you know that I do a little bit of preparation, creating photos or things like that, making sure I have something. So yeah, there is a conscious effort in making content for social media as well. You said something interesting actually when you said you try to blog once a week, and I know that some bloggers what only once a week? Unbelievable. Um, but you know, I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves thinking they have to blog every day or they have to do this. I think it really depends what your, what your approach is. Now, if you're looking for a very high traffic blog and you're going to be displaying advertising if you're a Mashable or a whatever it is or a Huffington Post, for example, yeah, you're going to be publishing many, multiple times a day. Uh, you're probably going to have a, a team of writers as well because that's going to be pretty hard to keep up on. But if you're trying to, you know, grow a business, and I'm not speaking you as and Wanda, you know this because you just said that <laughs> that it's a once a week, at least a once a week thing for you. Um, you're trying to, you know, sell a service, for example. You're growing your mailing list and stuff like that. You don't need to blog every day. Yes. The more content you get on the site, the more you know search traffic you can get. People come back, so you want to be regular. But I would always, you know, for me, it, the blog is one of the last things I worry about. Um, it's email first, always email first. Email is the most effective. Uh, social media is is great, and it depends. You guys are working in social media, it probably is. You know, obviously that makes it important. Um, and people have to kind of do their own thing. But even in the social media, as a social media expert, I'm thinking that email is probably still where you should have most of your focus because it's direct. It's how you can sell your services. It's harder to sell through social media. And I think. When did I talk about? Oh, that was a different. I wasn't sure if it was one of our hangouts or something else that I've done recently. It's much easier to sell by email. People expect that kind of commercial content. Uh, social media is a way to drive people to your mailing list. And I know some people feel, oh, well, I don't have very many people on my mailing list, so it's not very effective. So I focus on Twitter because I have this many followers. Well, that means you need to redo it and get those Twitter followers interested in your free offer so they're on your mailing list and you can market to them. Because yeah, we all start out with small lists. And you don't need a huge, huge list to have great results, but it's something that everybody should work on. So, you know, so yeah, don't put that pressure on yourself to think that a blog needs to be fresh and updated every day because it'll probably be okay <laughs> if it's not. All right. So what I was thinking too is talking about, and I think if anyone, I, I maybe I'll mention them now. I briefly mentioned it uh, with with Rebecca because she said she had picked up her content accelerators at Contentrix. If you you don't have to go there now, but if you go there and you uh, click topic ideas on the menu at the top, we have these list of hundred topic ideas for niche you could pick up. There's also a topic brainstorming guide in there. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning that topic brainstorming guide is because this is this next part kind of comes from that. And I know that sometimes a lot of people have uh, a different, a difficult way on how to approach their content. And this is related to what I talked to earlier about talking about the formats of content. But if you're not, you know, sure how to start your writing or or what what way to approach it, you know, there's always uh, you know a few things you can do. Obviously you could start out with interviews. Interviews are easy. Uh, if they're written, they're not as 
not always as interesting in the name, you know, this person said this, this person said this, but that works. But if you add a great introduction and maybe some commentary along the way, it's a great way to put together some easy content. Um, you know, top 10 or top 100 if you're ambitious, uh, those types of lists are great too. And I know some people, writers, will say, oh, that's just terrible, lazy writing. But you know what? People like it. People share that stuff. They read it. It's easy to read. And we have to have content that's easy to read on the web because if we're doing scholarly long paragraphs and, and complicated language, nobody's going to stick around to read us. So those top lists always work well. They're also easy to expand later because if you have a top five list of something, each of those, depending on the topic, of course, each of those five things could potentially be five more, five more articles or blog posts or whatever it happens to be. So that's a great way to get started. How-tos and tutorials, uh, I think that Shelley kind of mentioned that she's trying to fill in those gaps for people answering their questions. Uh, you can add screenshots, you can do it by video. Uh, a lot of people like to do their, you know, like a, if it's something on the computer, screen capture or video. I like doing that, but then I find those have to be updated a lot, and I'm not skilled enough with the video editing. But if you're doing screenshots, it's easy to, you know, update the text and swap out whatever you need to uh, and go back. Oh, I think you, you might. No, you're not muted. Oh, I couldn't hear sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first info product that I did was a tutorial with screenshots. Mm -hmm. And people liked it because it walked them through, you know, ABC, and uh, it worked out really well. But I did that six months ago, and it's already out of date. Out of date. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's hard. It's either start from scratch or go fix up, but it's still easier to do than had you done a screen capture. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And I find, I mean, I know some people prefer that type of tutorial, and then that, that, you know, that's totally all well and good, but I think then people can also, if you have it in written format, they can go back and pinpoint those little spots where they need to go back and refer to something. It's not quite as easy in a video. Um, the resource lists are great, too, you know, if you're not sure what you, oh, what did I do? Nothing. Uh, if you're, sorry, I'm clicking away, looking at my notes, coming back, looking at your faces. Um, uh, resource lists, uh, whether it's, you know, a bunch of books or if it's other blog, specific blog posts on a topic or you make a weekly reading list or something for, for your readers, whether it's to pick, read articles, watch some videos, whatever it happens to be. Those are, you know, easy to put together. It's piggybacking on other people's work, but it's also giving those people exposure as well, so uh, it's a great way to do that. And also, you know, when I said going back to talking about scanning your RSS feed or whatever it is, um, and some people think, oh, you're stealing ideas from people, and well, not really. You can write on those topics, that's fine. But you can also, you know, read that one particular or a couple of them and, and make a commentary about that. Shape your article as a rebuttal if you don't agree with the, the person who wrote it, or maybe expanding on and saying, hey, I read this great article, and they said blah, 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 and I totally agree with this because, and then, you know, add your own personal input into it. Easy way to, to, to build on something. And sometimes that's also a great way when you're linking, maybe not if you're arguing and calling someone an idiot or something like that, but if you're, you know, you're, you're using their content and, and, and showcasing their knowledge, it's a great way to start making a connection. Now, you're not going to become friends with someone just because you link to them, but it, it starts, you know, people start to notice that, and then it makes it easier for you to talk, you know, open up other channels of communication, because as I, we've said in a number of Hangouts, is that we do need to know people in our niches. We need to get to know them, have them, you know, those are people who can promote for us, we can promote for them. Uh, it's a win-win situation. We could share knowledge and things like that. So that, you know, by creating that content, you kind of open, start opening that door to connecting. And same with what Wanda said about being a curator of content as well. Sometimes the links on social media to other people's content aren't as, aren't as noticeable, but like if you link to another blog, they'll usually see it as a track back or something in their, in their WordPress panel, even if they don't, even if they have track Backpacks disabled, usually in WordPress you could still see who's linking to you even if it doesn't appear. 
So I think that's a, a, a more direct way to start appearing in someone's vision and, and eventually getting to know them. Uh, obviously, you know, when you're talking about monetizing content, great content to you know, sell products as product reviews, detailed reviews, you know, go that extra mile, not those, I know nobody here would do it, but you know, those junky review sites that don't really say anything and then end up doing a bait and switch or something and try to <laughs> sell you something else. But, you know, good quality reviews uh, that take, you know, I know that, does anybody in here know Tiffany Dow? No? Uh, it's, her last name is D-O-W, Tiff Tiffany Dow. She does a lot of really in-depth reviews. I don't think I would do them as, as detailed as she does, but she, if she's in review, reviewing an information product, she might do it over the course of a month and reviews chapter by chapter, and, and her readers really seem to enjoy it. But it's something, not saying that that's what you need to do or anybody else needs to do, but it's something that makes hers a little unique and gets, you know, it, it, it captures her audience and that's what they look for. So, you know, finding that, what you can bring to the table for your readers when it comes to reviews. So she's talking about products all the time, but she's doing it in a helpful way, making it easy, easy to sell it. Uh, product comparisons are also good. I mean, for, for Wanda, who not only does social media stuff, but she helps like with setting up newsletters and things like that, like comparing autoresponder services, that's an overwhelming choice for people <laughs> to decide what they should use. So, you know, those types of comparisons are good, and they're readily searched for as well. So it can be good search engine uh, content. Um, and sometimes we should just have fun, right? Make people laugh, make, you know, just, you know, just do something, something a little wacky or different or, or to make them think and, you know, more on the emotional side uh, or make them cry. So sometimes it's good to make your audience cry when it brings up, you know, good emotions that, that make them think about things. So, you know, whether it's you finding something else that you want to share or creating your own thing. Uh, it's definitely something that connect, can connect you to your audience a whole lot better. Um, one thing also I think we haven't really talked about is user-generated content. Uh, you know, getting your audience to, to make your content. Uh, you can do this by, I used to do this a lot actually on one of our blogs and it worked quite well, is I would just, the post would be a question. And then I'd email the list and make them answer it. So it helps if it's controversial or something that people really have a strong opinion about. Um, but there you go, like, you know, you get 30 comments or something like that, and you've got, you've got a piece of content there that people can go through. And they're discussing with each other, they're interacting, and, you know, it's a great way to, to make content by just reversing it. You know, I, we talked about saying people submit questions to you. You know, turn the tables on them. Um, you could also take, you know, guest submissions. We all know about guest blogging, obviously, but not all of our audience is going to want to blog or are they knowledgeable on the topic. But we can have them submit things like photos, uh, whatever, it, you know, it depends on your topic and things like that. But just have them submit things or stories or li just little snippets of things um, that, that you could share with your audience that they would appreciate. But again, you're not making the content, they're, they're submitting it to you. So just a few ideas. I don't know if that's uh, generating some thoughts for you guys here. Or... I actually do that with a, one of my curation sites. It's on uh, Yorkies, which I have. Um, and I invited, we have a Facebook group, and I invited um, people to submit their photos to be put on and tell us a little bit about them. And people loved having their, their dogs highlighted on any given day and those are the posts that people respond to the yep. most right because they're you know someone's sharing their their baby they're part of it and yeah and it, it yeah it definitely creates that connection with the person who's allowed to share and then everybody else also it feels more like a community yeah so you have a you have one yorkie i have two yorkies and wanda has a schnauzer and i have a schnorky <laughs> a schnauzer yorkie cross <laughs> Actually, I've never seen that particular cross, but... Oh, so cute. And they, they yeah. look very different, actually. I noticed ours is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to share the picture. 
Yes. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, right with here, the <laughs> But they have certain places in the house that they don't like to go to the bathrooms. They don't like to go to the bathrooms. Sorry. Someone must be passing the house. Yes, of course. <laughs> Got to keep an eye out. Yeah, I'm far away from there. They do that in the front of the house, too, but I'm kind of far. I think you might not hear it if, if that happened. All right. So also another thought. Uh, does anybody here work with ghostwriters? Do you hire ghostwriters? Or... Have I do yet? <laughs> do you? Yeah, I have, although not mostly from my client side. Right. Um, and uh, I have pa purchased some PLR that I've rewritten for them because it's a, a good starting point if I have a client whose subject matter isn't one I'm that familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I purchased some of yours, uh, so I found that that's really helpful. I want it to be original when it goes up, so I always rewrite, but um, the PLRs really helped, you know, with those unfamiliar topics, and uh, if I need a lot of content in a short period of time, I've used iWriter or Elance. Right. And you, Wanda, have you used Ghostwriters or your PL? I know you use PLR sometimes, and... Mm -hmm. Um, no, I haven't had to use a ghostwriter yet, but one day I'm sure I will need one. <laughs> and I know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, yeah, we do have the service at allcustomcontent.com, and there's lots of other great providers out there. One thing we do, and I mentioned it, and, I, and I'm sure other ghostwriters do it as well, is doing just that content, the brainstorming as well. We have kind of a monthly, you can just hire us to do your topic brainstorming if you want. But also in our monthly service, we include that, like we uh, we include a certain number of pages. So whether somebody wants reports or articles, whatever they want, they choose what they want, and they have a certain amount of number that they want, whether it's 10, 20, some do 50, uh, whatever it is. But instead of them having to come up with the topics, we include that as well as part of the research. You don't have to worry about it. But you those some of those some people like us just to do it completely for them. Some like to provide a little bit of guidance, like they'll say like, well you pick, but I would also I would definitely like this and this included so that you know they might do some of it when they want to cover something specific. But you know there's different ways to get that research done for you also if you if you don't want to do it. Um, I think it's always best to have your finger on it somehow because you know what products you want to promote. Uh, you could share that with your ghostwriter as well and say, hey this, I'm going to be promoting this uh, information product or this physical product, whatever it is, and, and either give them access to see it or maybe it's a table of contents or something like that where they can come up with topics related to that. Because I don't think you want to just do it, you know, go ahead and figure, figure it out for me completely because without the guidance, you're not, you're not making sure that content's building your business. If you're a you know, a high volume publisher who displays advertising like the Mashable or the Huffington Post that we mentioned, then it might not matter so much because all you want is that popular content going out. And you're not so worried about selling products. You just want traffic and you want to work with your advertisers. All right. Let's see if I had anything else that I don't want to miss. I think we kind of covered the things I was thinking about. Are, you know, any. Any final thoughts? Actually, we're heading up to 10.30 Pacific Standard Time anyway, so I'll have to run and get my daughter from preschool. But uh, any thoughts or what you're going to go do next? <laughs> um, Alice, I have a question. Uh, how much uh, can somebody expect to pay for a ghostwriter? Since I haven't gone down that road yet, it's like how does it usually work pricing-wise? Is it based on an hourly rate or a, per job? I think that it's very, I'm sure there are some who charge an hourly rate, but I don't know how you know how much you're going to pay for that, but I think it's pretty standard to have a per page kind of rate. Some might do per word, but I think people don't think in words, they think in pages, so it's easier for the client to understand a per page rate. And I think it can vary. Um, we Ours are up to, up to $30 per page if you're just doing you know, a one-time job. It, it, you save money by doing the monthly thing or whatever like that. But we include 
that in that monthly thing we include the brainstorming, we do the editing, we have someone else edit it. It's not self-edited by by the writer. Someone else, a professional write, editor, actually goes in and edits the content. And we man even if we are using multiple writers, we manage them. You're just talking to one project manager all the time. So we aren't expensive, I wouldn't say that, but we may be on some of the higher end. Uh, I mean, you can get, well, you can get it as low as a dollar to an article if you want, but I think you're going to find that it might not make that much sense. So <laughs> the content is not quite English, not sure what it is, but I have think to rewrite it a lot. Pardon? And you'd have to rewrite a lot. Oh, yes. Oh, that's not it. Probably not even just throw it out. <laughs> Rewriting it <laughs> harder than anything. But I, I, you, you're using Elance and stuff. What would you say is like 10 or $15 is... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. If you, you know, you're looking at a... Um, I, the ones I've purchased have been by word, so, you know, 750 to 1,000 words. It's ten, fifteen dollars is kind of the minimum for a, a, yeah. a good quality. Definitely, you can get some that are less, but you find that it's repetitive and it doesn't it doesn't make sense. I did that a couple of times, and um, the experience of rewriting was so frustrating. I just now go straight to yeah the higher level writers. It, it just doesn't. It's not worth what you think you're saving. You end up. Way, spending way more on redoing. Yes. I could have basically, one of them I could have just researched and written myself in less time than it took to try and decipher what was being Things. said in the article. Yeah. So I would definitely say at least 10 to $15. Yeah. And you want to find someone reliable. I know that's why a lot of people stay with us because even though our writer, some of our writers come and go, the company, we're still. It's us, mm -hmm. and we will make sure the project is done. When you're dealing with an individual, you have to deal with, you know, their whatever personal problems that might come up. Their 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 internet was down, or this and that, and mm -hmm. and and you know, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying that's that's I think some of the difference between the, the lower ten and fifteen dollars. And you might find someone you work with for a long time at that rate too. Like it's you know, if it's a it's a hidden miss, but if you if you hit, make sure you keep them and keep them busy and you give them more work, regular work, and then they'll be available for you all the time. All right. Okay, well maybe we'll leave it off at that. I'm glad you guys could join me today. And uh, if you have any I this I think the once I end this, it, the video processes and then it posts it onto my profile. Uh, if you have any ideas for a topic for next week, uh, happy to hear those. Otherwise, I'll just throw, pick something up. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.